Hey guys, so you've just seen it. It's uh, an audio dice or a sound cube or whatever you want to call it really. It doesn't have to be a dice, it could be anything. The idea is that it, uh, it detects the direction that it's facing, so it uses an accelerometer, an ADXL 345, to detect its orientation using the Earth's gravity based on one of these little tiny accelerometer chips, just like you'd find in your phone. Um, it has two Arduinos in here. One runs the MP3 player shield from SparkFun, which is a great little device, which plays audio from the SD card, which is on their micro SD card. The other Arduino looks at the accelerometer constantly to figure out its direction and then does something accordingly, and that's all done in the software. So then it transmits that to the other Arduino using um, the TX line, and the other Arduino detects that on the RX line, and it receives a character and it decides what's it, what it's going to do. Now it also has a PAM8403, I think I'm saying that right, uh, mini amplifier and a speaker. And it all runs from a 9 volt battery. Now, this could be anything, it's just a cube, so really you could replace the sides with anything you like. My original idea was that it was for, let's say, visually impaired people so that they could roll a dice and know what the number was, so that they can take part in whatever games people are playing at the time. But it could also be used as a learning tool for children, so you could replace the sides on here with, let's say, a cow, a sheep, a pig. And when he rolled it and it landed on one of those sides, or rather that was the face that was uh, up, it would make the noise of that animal. Or, it could, well, it could be anything. It could be a city, a picture of a landmark, anything at all really to help you learn. So if you can use a visual aid with a sound attached, then you can put it inside this thing. Now, what I've done is I've just bought this foam cube and hollowed it out so that you can see there there's loads of crappy electronics in there. It's a prototype so it's very ugly. Let's just pull some of this out so you can have a look. Right, so this is the cube. So if I just take off the top, you can see that it's been hollowed out on the inside. Um, I used a foam cube just because I knew it would be sturdy enough to hold the Arduino, but also bouncy enough to be rolled as a dice without damaging my wooden floor. Uh, and inside, we have all the electronics. Now there's the 9 volt battery. I've put them all inside little plastic bags or the um, components so that they don't touch and short each other. So the 9 volt battery sits there. That's all it needs to power everything. Now that won't last a long time and of course it's not rechargeable so um, a new solution is really needed. Uh, and in here we have all the electronics in like a horrible little mess of stuff. Uh, so on the top here we've got a circuit board, I'll just turn it over so you can see. There's the, the PAM8403 which is the amplifier. I've got a line out circuit here using capacitor and some resistors. That's so that I can um, ensure the stuff coming out from the um, spark fun MP3 plate can go into here without causing any feedback noise or whatever it is. It's like it just sort of cleans the signal up. Um, and then there's the accelerometer placed on the board here now. If I were making this properly, I'd want to have um, this all balanced so that the cube always lands on the appropriate side, but I'm not really too bothered about that at the moment for a prototype. And we've got a speaker here, just a small, it's like an A-tone speaker, I think, something like that. And again, this is wrapped in plastic so that they don't touch each other. And then we've got an Arduino here, which connects to the accelerometer. And then on the bottom, if I can just pull it out, there's a lot of wires everywhere. We've got the SparkFun MP3 player shield here, uh, connected to another Arduino. And they all connect via the RX and TX lines so that they can communicate together. And that's pretty much it. So, what to do with it, really? Uh, I would love it to be developed. Um, I can't develop it myself. I've not gone as far as I can with it, but at the moment I don't really know what people would want from this kind of device. I know that it could be useful. Um, I certainly find it a bit fun to roll a dice and have the number read out to me. Uh, it's my own voice, by the way. You can record anything and stick it in there. I've just numbered the MP3s 1 to 6 so that it would trigger um, with the six sides of the dice. But you could replace those with anything you liked. You could have a switch on there to change the language so that it would then read out uh, one French dot MP3 and it would say one in French, which is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> 
I do actually. Undo trois quatre cinq. Yeah, so you could have it in French, you could have it in German, you can have it in anything you like, um, and just switch those when you wanted it to change. Now, there is another option uh, for this, an easier option potentially, um, a smartphone app. Um, most smartphones, in fact, all of them, as far as I know, now include accelerometers inside them. So you could just load up an app and it would say the word on the speaker. Um, you just put it into a dice, seal it up, and then roll it around. Now, the, the problem with that is people don't really want to give their kids a phone and let them toss it about the room inside some phone thing. They want the phone with them so they can use it. So this is just a simpler way of doing it. Now, the cost of this thing is a bit high, unfortunately. I think that's because it's a prototype, really. You could easily get hold of uh, the chip for the MP3 player, which I think is uh, VS1043B or something like that. Certainly a VS chip. Um, and the Sparkphone MP3 player shield was about £20. Two Arduinos, um, they're clones, so they're cheap. Um, sorry, Arduino, but uh, I had to get them cheap. So they were about 12 quid each. So, I mean, it, it cost me probably about 50 or 60 pounds to put that together, which is kind of expensive. The phone cube itself was about four pounds from eBay. So it's kind of expensive for a prototype, but I'm sure that with some uh, economies of scale in manufacture, then it would come down in price. But at the moment, it's still just a prototype. And I'd love to hear what you think of it. How could I develop it a bit further? It would be nice to know. All right, well, thanks for watching. I'm not going to give you the code, um, because at the moment it's a bit crappy. It only works in a single case scenario. So it's not, not very well developed, but I'm sure you can figure it out just from my explanation. All right, thanks. Bye.